Welcome back, everybody. This is Steve KM9G, and and I got one. It's here. I'm building it. So uh, come join me over on the workbench. Let's get this thing started. We're going to make this a multi-part series, so it's not like such a hard pill to swallow. It's actually a fairly easy kit to build. Like, it's it's as easy as all the rest of Hans's uh, QRP Labs kits. It's, it's challenging enough to be fun, easy enough to, to get it done, and it's a pretty rewarding kit to build. Uh, let's go do part one, and we'll see you on the flip side. The moment we've all been waiting for was this kit to arrive, and I didn't get in on the first batch of orders. I didn't get in on the second batch of orders, but I was paying attention to the groups.io mailing list for this thing. There's a link in the description down below for that. Um, and that is where I found out that this one was for sale from another ham and I picked it up as quickly as I possibly could. So always be vigilant is the answer there and you will wind up with the prize that you are looking for except for my ability to open up this wrapper here. Let's take a look and see what we got inside the kit. Hands makes these kits fantastically. Um, these are extremely well designed, extremely well thought out, planned out, tested, supported etc and start out with this nice metal case so when it is complete it will be a completely enclosed box and this case is very similar to the one that came with the QCX mini and it is the same size as the amp so I know he's getting these somewhere and getting them cut and and uh, milled out to the right size and spec but when you're done that's what this radio is going to look like. From my experience with the QCX Mini, these feet did not fare so well. So I'm not even going to bother to put the feet on this one. I'm going to figure something out. So we'll put those feet off to the side. We'll put the case off to the side because we won't really need that until the very end. And then what else do we have in here? We have all the parts itself. And there's really not a whole heck of a lot of parts here. So we have the board. It's been through quality control already pre-populated with a bunch of useful parts and things and so forth. And there's not a whole heck of a lot that we need to do. We've got to put the final transistors on. We've got to put the toroids. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different toroids. And we've got some for power and we've got some for inductance and we've got one for bringing us into band alignment. It's going to be pretty interesting to do. We've got DC power, USB jack, RF antenna jack. Oh, there's another toroid right there. This one's laying on its side, so I didn't see it. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten toroids. Wow. All right, and then we've got parts galore. Let's get these things out and sorted. Left one behind. Left one in the bag. Alrighty. We've got capacitors, a binocular toroid core, circular, 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 circular. Oh, that one's bigger. Oh, I feel so much better now that we have a, a larger toroid to mess with. More capacitors. More capacitors, capacitors, capacitors galore. Here's your final transistors. That's your temperature controlled crystal oscillator. A screw. A washer, which means there should be a nut in here somewhere. A nut, and this is going to be your heat sink configuration for your Raspberry Pi. We've got two different spools of magnet wire. And this one is thicker than this one is, so I have to pay attention to that. More capacitors, some diodes, more cores. This thing's got more cores, more cores, more cores. Diodes, capacitors, capacitors, capacitors. And just by looking at these, I don't know if those are resistors or inductors, but we'll get there. More capacitors. 
and more capacitors and more capacitors and more capacitors and another diode LED diode this one we've got to put in in a special way to make it stick out of the case in a certain way as well so we'll get to that and then the USB connector it's a nice package the BNC connector and the power connector all right step one is to install the ceramic capacitors all of them and there are two four five six eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen of them so let's get all of these parts set aside We'll set that one off to the side because I don't know what that one says. Now we got those all sorted out, organized. We can get the, oh, we got one left that I didn't figure out. So we'll go through and we'll double check the list. So that makes this 181. Soldering iron is warmed up. And these ones here do not have any orientation. So you just put them in. And what I like to do is put all the labels facing in the same direction, just because I do. So C5 and C14. I mean, you have to pick a reason to do everything, right? My reason is because. So there is C14, where's C5? Okay, and now I don't even need to check them off the list because they're just missing. And what I do is I stick them in to the circuit board and then I fold the legs over like this and that holds the component in place for when I'm working. And as you can see on the back of this circuit board there's tons of little tiny surface mount components so you want to be careful with your angle of attack such that you don't wind up taking surface mount components off of the board. And that solder joint got kind of ugly, so what I will do is I will clean off the tip of my soldering iron, and I will reflow that to make it look pretty. And in so doing, I got the hole next to it filled with solder. So we'll have to fix that real quick. We get out some solder braid, which is this stuff here, and it's specially coated to solve this problem. And there it is, problem solved. You just hold the solder braid on for a little bit and it wicks up the excess solder. These components were getting very hard to find. And so you might wind up with a situation like this where you've got the wrong lead spacing on the component. No big deal, we just get out our pliers and we fix that. So that's one leg straightened. And it's two legs straightened, and straightened enough is good enough. So let's get that in there. And this goes into C10. So two things that come to note on that one there, 
the one side, the lower side, took a little bit longer. And when I first soldered it on, when I first soldered it on, um, I soldered the leg of the component and not the trace on the board. And that must mean that that's the ground side, and the ground side is most of the board, so it's going to have a huge heat sink area to it. Um, no big deal. That's part number one. So I added some more heat and I got it, but that left me with a big solder blob. So I clipped the leg off and then I just touched it up again with a soldering iron. Soldering is extremely forgivable. So I would not be worried about it. I would not be concerned about it. I would just uh, continuously get better, continuous improvement. And there's another surface mount component right next to it, so I'm coming in from this side, my attack angle. One left, 300 goes into C31. No, oh, I cut those legs a little short. We got this. All right, we are all set with capacitors. And that's what it looks like to have all the capacitors done. All right, what is up next? Diode. Well, that's gonna be easy. All six of these diodes are all the same kind. Let me verify that real quick, just because I don't wanna go through all that work. These are 1N4007. All right, those are all good. And each of those goes at the bottom of where the toroids are installed. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if you look closely at the circuit board, where are we? There is a white stripe on the board in the footprint. So there's a white stripe and then it says D4. And you just wanna make sure that the white stripe on the diode itself lines up with that footprint white stripe, and then you know you've got them right. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these all installed. Bend the legs over, stick it in the hole. Pull it all the way through. And I'm just using these pliers to get a grip, not to massively yank these things down into place. Fold them on the back side, and grab the next one. You'll see that what I did was move the board around to get the angle of attack pr proper, made a bunch of changes so that I could get in there. And then even with all of that work, there was still one of them that wasn't easy to get to. So I saved it till the end. I cut off all the rest of the legs and then I was able to get to it just fine and kind of strategize about these things sometimes. Making progress, love it. In the instruction manual, you will see here that he tells you what you need to do. He gives you a list of parts. He gives you a diagram of where they go on the board and what they look like. And then when you're all done, he shows you what your project should look like also. So I wanna verify that all of the white caps are over to the left side and we're good to go on to the next step, which is final transistors. Excellent. Final transistor time. These should be BS170s. Good, all right, all four of those are good to go. And these have a flat face and a round bottom, and you want the flat face to fold down onto the circuit board. So I'm gonna put this thing in, and because it folds down, that makes it almost impossible to get these three pins lined up wrong once you know that trick. Get in there.
spread that last one out a little bit. It's giving me some grief. And there we go. Get that down as close as I can. And then fold it over. And then to make sure that these things all go in the right way and have proper connectivity with the surface of the board, we're going to bolt them into place before we solder them down. Which is going to be an interesting bit of dexterity. All right, that looks great. Let's get it soldered down. Good solid contact with the board on all the transistors. And since these are heat sensitive, I didn't dwell a lot on them. And when I thought they needed some touch up, I came back to it later and touched it up later. They're all installed and they look good. All right, so we got the first part out of the way. That was fantastic. Um, a lot of the easy stuff, all of the through hole components, we're probably all pros at through hole components at this point. If not, I hope that my video has helped you understand that it's not difficult and things are repairable, overcomable, and whatnot. We've got more videos in the series coming up. Be sure to stay subscribed to the channel. There is a video right over here that I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome.